Welcome to the Juniper Validated Design Podcast. My name is Andy Laptev, and today I am joined by Ben Griffin. Ben, who are you? What do you do at Juniper? Hi, my name is Ben Griffin. I work at Juniper Networks on the Market Use Case and Solutions team in the Cloud Ready Data Center. We build solutions that make our customers' lives easier. Ah, making customers' lives easier. You're talking my language, Ben. I don't feel like too many people were making my life easier when I was managing production data centers. So thank you for thank you for the good work you're doing. Um, this is going to be a conversation around design mostly, right? And I'll be honest with you, I, I'm not great at design. You know, I, I, I traditionally was handed designs from our architects and they're like, hey, here's a bunch of iron, you know, go go implement the design we, we gave. So um, you're going to be my design expert here. Um, so, you know, we're here to talk about Juniper validated designs. Um, before we jump into that, I guess, let's just talk about design at a high level. How, you know, a customer comes to Juniper and says, hey, I want to build this network. How have we done that traditionally? Uh, well, traditionally, we, we basically handed them uh, a whole bunch of uh, technical documentation and said, good luck. No, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's not entirely true. Um, yeah. we, we basically gave them a kind of a, a baseline of how to do things, um, but we didn't really put any guardrails in place. All right, right? so uh, it really... The, the skies was was a limit to what you could do with Juniper hardware. Um, there's a lot of knobs. There's a lot of things to turn. Um, and every knob and everything that you do enable has some level of impact on other things. So while it's it's great that uh, we are very flexible um, and in certain times we could be very specialized in helping our customers meet certain needs, um, we have not traditionally um, put put things in place that actually said, this is the best way to do it. Because we wanted to give the customers the flexibility to go out and make those choices for themselves. Um, what we're finding is that a lot of folks, um, you know, in today's networks, they've gotten very complex. They don't necessarily even know where to start, let alone where to end. And we're trying to give them a roadmap of how to get from point A to point B and be successful in that delivery of, of that network. That makes a lot of sense. And I've worked in a lot of those overly complex, over-engineered, all the nerd knobs, right, dialed up. And it's it's so hard for a number of reasons. I'm just thinking back to my own career, like even troubleshooting, right? Something breaks, you get called in the middle of the night, you're on, and you're like, oh my God, where do I start? What part of the Snowflake network is broken and what's what's happening? So there's, there, there's so much to be said for more of like a, a prescriptive, you know, overarching design of like, here here's, which I think is where we're going with Juniper Validated Design, right? So... It, 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 do you have like a high level definition of what what is this thing? What are we talking about with you know what is Juniper validated design? So a, a Juniper validated design is a, a well defined, well tested, um, and well described network, right? So uh, what we really get into is uh, we have certain products that for, fulfill certain roles within the data center, um, and we go through uh, a rigorous testing process to kind of one, validate that everything functions on, on a network level, um, but we take it to the extra step where we actually start to incorporate things that our customers would traditionally attach to those networks. So um, things like VMware or um, you know, Kubernetes. Um, we actually start attaching uh, tech, third third party storage vendors. We bring in um, other other parts of the our portfolio from our security components to our um, WAN uh, components to our campus components and we bring those all together we give you a guided resource on how to get uh, those components attached to the data center and where they function up until recently talking to you I didn't know much about testing and, and what goes into that so I you know I, I think it'd be helpful just briefly to kind of jump into the testing because again as a network engineer I'm out there I'm doing things I'm pressing buttons bad things happen I'm like oh my god why can't vendor XYZ give me a stable reliable predictable network right. right now i may be you know if we're coming to a vendor saying i want to do these certain things please enable me to do that sure we'll let you design whatever you want right but you mentioned to me when we talked before about that's not all tested right the downside of doing bespoke or letting the customer design anything they want and turn any nerd knob is it's not realistic that vendors like ourselves can test all those scenarios right all right. Well, we, we go through um, what we call functional testing. So this is where we start. Um, so when a new feature gets released, um, we, we go through a one making sure the feature works. Right. And, and, and that is subjective to the hardware that it's on. So it's kind of like in an isolated case. Does it does it function? Does it not? When what we do beyond that 
is we go into something called uh, multifunctional testing where we bring in other other products that would fit in in that same portfolio sc uh, scope so things like leaves would interoperate together when we turn on this feature um, it works across different platforms and then we take it to the next level where we do uh, scale and performance testing so to make sure that the feature meets the scale requirements that were put forth um, you know based on that request and then finally we do something called a pdt or product delivery testing which uh, is more of a use case uh, scenario testing where we, we use spirants and other things. Obviously, we've done this prior in the, the scale testing, but now we're doing more of um, what would people would see as traffic generation, things like that, to where we're actually making sure that you know things function um, relatively well over a period of time. And then finally, what the JVD does, it, we take all that testing that's happened beneath it, and uh, we layer on top an actual real world data center. We actually bring it into where we have real world traffic. We are using real world applications. Um, we have real world storage components. And we take all these these pieces that would traditionally were kind of left off um, because it is a big uplift for us, right? Um, and you got to remember, like we effectively have to have experts in VMware. We have to have experts in Kubernetes. We have to have experts uh, in storage that basically help you know, bring bring this to fruition. So we have to put a, a lot of effort and, and uh, you know, investment in, in those resources, just like our customers do. And then once we put all those things together, we validate that they work as, a, as, as expected, right? It, it's, it's, it's pro, it, it does the thing that it's supposed to do um, and that there's no issues. So what we're really trying to do is before the product leaves the, the factory to ensure that there are, there are no issues and that when the, our customers go ahead and adopt these models, um, they can have a high level of confidence that from day one to day 100, things will work just as expected. That sounds awesome and not my experience in prod. So I'm, I'm really, that's, that's why I get so excited about this and that multifunctional testing and it, it that really opened my eyes when you described that to me because yeah, you can create a feature, spin it up in some software version, say, Oh yeah, it works great. Ta-da. There's the hello things or there's the neighbors that come up. Yay. But then when you start plugging all the pieces in and all the systems that, you know, exist in a data center, that's, that's really where the rubber, you know, meets the road to me. So, you know, when, I, when I was managing prod, you know, I want a predictable data center. I want my network just to run. I want it to be reliable. I do not want to be called every single time I'm on call. Right. Um, and, and from what I'm understanding from you, I mean, that's what JVDs help deliver, right? So now we're kind of pivoting into the benefits of, you know, if you follow this prescriptive, you know, tested design that we're calling JVDs, Juniper Validated Designs, what are some of the benefits you get? So, I mean, I guess reliability is one of the biggest ones you have to touch on, right? Right. So um, what, what we're what we're really trying to do is enhance our customer experience. So, so nobody wants to go through the process of opening up cases and, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what's, what's going on from, from a network perspective. Right. And, and a lot of times, I mean, let's be honest, it's not necessarily a network issue. It's just an issue somewhere in the, the ecosystem of a data center. Um, so we want to do two things. One, we want to make sure that everything functions as it should properly function um, and that uh, it's, e it's easily achievable for a customer. So we're going to basically give you a point A to point B like you start with nothing, you end with a completed data center. Um, and if you follow the model, uh, everything that we've done, you'll end up with the exact same configuration pieces that we've, we put together. Um, this does two things for you. Uh, one, obviously this is what we test against. So again, we're, 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 we're removing obstacles before you even get there. The second part is now we have a well-defined network. Uh, so we know exactly what it should look like. And let's say you call in one day and I, I've got a problem and, and things aren't working. Well, it gives us a, an easy place to start from. So we don't necessarily think that people will 100% stay within what is the end result of um, the JVD. I mean, we expect some level of modification. Uh, you know, things are, people are gonna attach different things. Things are gonna happen from that perspective, right? We can't test everything, but we, we do expect, you know, some level of, of change. The problem is, is like, how do you identify that change? And since we know what it should look like uh, in the, you know, pristine state, it's easy for us to identify drift. And then we can focus on those items that, that are really drift related. The other pieces, let's say it wasn't the data center, right? It's not at least data, uh, the, the, the network in itself. Um, it's again, easier for us to identify this all looks good. 
So let's focus on what the problem with the application is, and, and maybe that's where the, the issue lies. So that mean time to innocence is greatly reduced. That's amazing. I, I, I want to say that every almost every support case I ever opened with any vendor started with me sending them over a drawing of this thing we built, and then a bunch of show techs of the stuff that we like, because we had to teach them what the network design was every single time we opened a case. And that, that took a lot of time. And it, it it increases the MTTR, that mean time to innocence as well. So that, yeah, if, if everybody's using this descriptive design, here's what it should look like, here's what the config should do. And it's much easier to, I guess, find, you know, deviations from that. Um, and, and I love the, the, you know, the customer experience driven stuff. Like, you're right, nobody wants to open a support case. So and, and, and the meantime, the innocence, right? Like, everybody blames the network. <laughs> so, you know, if we can, if we can get to that innocent state earlier, which it sounds like one of the things that JVDs can do for us, like, yeah, when stuff breaks, it stinks. But JVDs enable support to get to a solution quicker. You know, what's the weird thing that happened because we have a prescriptive model. And then when somebody calls in and says, hey, my app isn't working. Okay, well, we have this prescriptive model. We can see what's working and what isn't. And help me say it's not the network, <laughs> you know, much faster. Because I've spent days, if not, you know, I remember, like, I remember spending four days on this big problem, right? And at the end, it wound up being like an expired certificate on a server. Now, they didn't even tell us. <laughs> We're like, hey, whatever happened to that outage such and such? You're like, oh, yeah, that was a certificate on a server. I'm like, were well, they going to tell us? Like, we're still testing, you know? So there's just, you know, so much stuff that, that can happen. So we're, we're driving reliability. I, you know, I was talking to a friend when we were talking about JVDs, and he, he mentioned something about, you know, boring operations, right? I kind of love, like, I always think of the Maytag repairman who's just sitting around, and those Maytag appliances are so reliable, built so well, right? Um, that, you know, he just sits around and has, has nothing to do. So I, I love that thought of, you know, if you follow JVDs and the prescriptive model and all the testing behind it, operating a network will be less dramatic. <laughs> you know, I, uh, my, my, my days have been fraught with, you know, as a network engineer and prod with just endless drama. So I, I kind of like the thought of, you know, the network just runs. And when something weird happens, it's much quicker and easier to, 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 to find it. Um, is, so for JVDs, I guess, is this just for Greenfield? Like if you're building something new, you would follow JVD. Let's say I have a network. How, how do I get, if I have a brownfield, how do I get to JVD? Is it, is it iterative as, as I replace end of life gear, I start to go toward this design? How does that work? Yeah, so basically uh, we, we see kind of like two, two avenues. Um for for insertion for a JVD, uh, one is obviously yeah, new networks, new projects um, that you can isolate and put off to the side, um, and and basically start building um, towards the, the the new architecture, right? Um, the the other model is obviously like a full on migration. So um, we have a lot of customers that are um, upgrading from previous versions of Junos. So this is kind of like an opportune time to make that transition because you're already going to go through some, some level of transition. Um, one, what that does help you with, if you're actually coming from a previous version of Junos to a newer version on the JVD, we have um, a very regimented um, release schedule that we follow. So effectively we're going on hardened releases or extended end of life releases. Um, so that, that puts our customers in a better position right there. Um, the other part is, is that if for the most part, the features align, um, you, you kind of take the guesswork out of is the problem Junos or is the problem that you know I've I've transitioned to this 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 new modern design and you know something's you know amiss there. Um, so we we kind of take you know that 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 hesitation or you know the the, the reluctance to to one get to a modern hit the center fabric or to, uh, you know, get up to the, the, the modern operating system, right? Um, because we do go through that entire process. We go through use case testing. Uh, the one thing I want to really, really highlight is um, if, you're, if you're on a JVD, effectively you are on what we would call a customer use case, right? So customer use cases inside of um, our organization are, uh, you know, basically custom test beds that are built that emulate some of our larger customers' networks. So these are you know, typically cloud providers and folks like that that we, we send through like extensive testing that, that emulates what they look like. Well, by moving to JVD, every single one of our customers get that experience, 
because the, you go through that same level of regression and you go through that same level of, te of, of testing um, and also uh, you know that same level of validation to ensure that all the products work uh, in conjunction with each other and that everything um, you know just functionally flows now I, and, and again we support any any model right so basically if a feature is supported on a platform it's supported on a platform it doesn't matter if you're on a jvd or not what the jvd does is we take it to the next level we give you that that extra um you know confidence that when you go and enable these these functions and these features everything will just work smoothly because we've done the the uh, the extra um you know testing to get you to that that next level so we've kind of taken some of that burden off the customer yeah, I guess there's an endless number of variations that you could build and features you could deploy and knobs you could turn. And it's just statistically probably near impossible to test all that. But because of this prescriptive model and it's all built in the interoperability and it, 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 to me, it's just about the testing. You go through all this vigorous testing. So when you deploy a JVD, we have beaten the heck out of that solution in our, you know, in our, in our labs and our, uh, in our customer test beds and stuff to to make sure that you're getting a, a reliable um you know prescriptive expected operation um you know, I, don't know, I don't know what people are going to do with themselves if they're not working outages and <laughs> and getting called in the middle of the night on call anymore ben uh what what, what are we talking about here so if, if somebody wants to learn more about jvds um I, I know i have a link we can put in the show notes um I mean, is this like an ask your SE thing? Do you just go to our to our documentation site and start reading? What what do we tell customers who are interested? Uh, so, so really, it's what they're most comfortable with. Um, so, from from a perspective of um, where to find it, uh, on the Juniper website, we have a an area called the Data Center Design Center, um, and within there, we have um, JVDs that are listed. So the as we publish new ones or what we have out, um, those will be covered. We have r roughly what we consider the four core JVDs, uh, which are three-stage fabric, a five-stage fabric, an IP fabric, and a collapse fabric. And then everything else uh, that would attach to a data center is considered an extension. So um, again, third-party vendor, VMware storage, um, even even some s subsets of how do you connect uh, a firewall properly to to the data center to to get the you know best performance out of it. Those those pieces are covered within those JVD extensions, so they just attach to any one of the four core, uh, so they're portable across. Um, and for the most part, your configurations will be exactly the same. You know, depending on which which one you're going into for them, but they, they will closely align um, to each other. What we we didn't cover like is like um, you know like what what is a JVD made of, right? So it what we what we do from a a perspective, like sometimes our customers don't know where to start, right? And if if you, if you don't know where to begin, you just kind of fall back on um, you know the, the things you know. So what I what I traditionally knew was a three tier architecture in a data center. Um, so I had a core, I had an aggregation, and I had an access layer. Um, so that's that's kind of where I want to stay. The problem is is that you know the, the world's moved on. We've all moved to to basically modern fabrics at this point, point. Um, and you like if you don't have the information you don't know where to begin it can it can be very complex it can you know be a little overwhelming so what a jvd provides is a great place to start from now what we put put in the the document of a, a juniper validated design is kind of our, our our prescriptive what we see for the most part everywhere um now, what we do also do is we replace certain platforms and certain roles. So we change out border leaves and and leaves and spines to achieve certain performance goals and and you know feature cap capability that's um, typically required within the data center based on customer need. So it is a little bit flexible from from that aspect. But for the most part, what we're doing is we're giving you um, you know where to start from, and then how do you achieve a fully functional um, you know well-tested, well-designed, uh, well-documented network. And what's kind of neat is we pull in other components that are part of our portfolio. So things like management, that's that's a, a key piece of, uh, in, of our uh, 
solution. And the main reason why is because it's basically self-documenting, right? So it keeps track of what, what's changing inside of the network. If you need an, a network diagram, if you need to know where something's at, it's already built into the solution. It makes it a lot easier for our customers to adopt these models and then also troubleshoot or even operate from, from day one to day 100. That hits home for me. I, I came up with core distribution access and the data centers I managed were were built that way as well. And then we went through a merger, two companies merged and the company we merged with, you know, they were, they were ahead technologically, you know, and they had, you know, Clo architecture. I'm like, what is this and what's going on and what are these configs and what the hell is EP, EVP and VX land? So I can really appreciate what you're saying that, yeah, if you come from, you know, the legacy for lack of a better term design that we were all told was the way to go forever. Right. And and now, you know, that was based on North, you know, North South traffic being 80% and it's flipped and now it's East West, you know, all that technical stuff, but there are very valid, you know, useful reasons to, to go with the three stage, five stage, you know, CLO architectures. And I wouldn't know where to start. So I can really appreciate Juniper validated design giving me like, Hey, okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Dinosaur, Andy, here's what you're used to, <laughs> but Here's where the technology, you know, here's where it's headed. Here's where you should be. And, and here's how you can do it. Um, is there anything else we should touch on before we wrap it up? I mean, I, I, I'm pretty excited about this. I really appreciate all the work Juniper's done to, you know, I, I keep going back to boring operations. You know, if you follow this, your network's just going to run. It's going to be reliable. You're going to have a good experience. It's all been tested, right? Did we miss anything? No, no. And again, you know, you, you hit it, hit it home. Um, what we're, what we're really going for is customer experience. Um, we actually consider ourselves in the uh, the solutions team customer uh, one. So we're the we're the first customer. We go through the same exact processes of setting up uh, a data center as our customers do. We go through the exact same processes of you know attaching these third party products to to our fabrics and then you know ensuring that everything functions properly. So we get to find stuff before it actually leaves the factory we get to address it before it gets to the customer and ultimately what we're we're looking to do is take the, the guesswork out of how to build a network how the network should operate and then not only from a, an operational standpoint of i got it in and, and, and working from the deployment but how do i operate it you know at day 100 day 200. i like the customer one concept your team goes through all that pain so that our you know, customers don't have to. Um, ben, thanks so much. This has been um, very informative for me. I'm really excited for what the Juniper Validated Designs can do for our customers. Thanks so much for joining us on the Juniper Validated Design Podcast, and we'll catch you next time.